welcome to a new feature. This is going to be the first of many of our monthly species spotlights where we take just a longer, deeper look at some of the really awesome fish that we get in stock. Uh, it's going to be something we're going to continue going just for education and to show off some really nice new fish. For our first installment, we're going to feature a great little fish, the Glowlight Danio, Danio Chopre. This is a wonderful little fish that in nature would be found in Myanmar in the northernmost regions in small clear water hill streams, uh, comes to mind kind of a creek like from back home and from the Midwest. Uh, you know, some of those cobbles, trees overhanging with some marginal vegetation on each side uh, where there is going to be a bit of flow. Fish that at least we here at the wet spot are nice and familiar with that we get in from the same region, maybe not the exact same spot, but same areas are going to be Batis Kayar, Dario Hysignan, uh, the little Paradox toothpick fish and Dostomus crocodilus, uh, spotted Sangaras, black spotted Daniels, a lot of fish used to a bit more flow on their environment. These guys in the wild, in their reaches, the water would typically be a temperature of about a steady 76-ish degree, 78, uh, with a pH of about 7.4, 7.6, so a little bit north of neutral with some hardness to it. In captivity, fortunately, I found them to be pretty adaptable. Uh, they can tolerate a wide range of parameters, and here they're doing something interesting, swimming into the flow of that filter. Uh, Kind of a side tidbit, fish bioenergetics wise, sometimes animals will use a bit more energy to swim into the flow of the water, using a bit more energy, but also gambling that there's going to be a lot more food flowing their way. In captivity, I found that these guys do well with temperatures somewhere between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so long as it's stable, and a pH somewhere between 6.0 and 8.2. I've kept them in very, very hard water before with great luck, uh, no issues with them, beautiful color. They just didn't spawn for me, so I would try to keep it a little softer than that if you're trying to get eggs out of them. This is a very, very pretty little fish. Uh, you can see on some of these in the background, females have kind of a silvery white belly, but still have that beautiful orange glow and the greenish blue stripes whereas males have more of that orangey red to the belly and are just a little slimmer in profile. They'll reach about 25 to 30 millimeters in length, uh, non-metric speaking, that's about an inch, inch and some change, maybe inch and a quarter on a big female. Uh, so not too large, definitely more of a nano fish. Uh, I would say I'd keep at least a group of 10 to 12 of these guys in a tank maybe as small as a 10 gallon, although a little bit more space is always gonna be helpful to show off a bit more natural behavior, uh, like this nice swarm here. We've had a lot of luck feeding them almost any food possible. I mean, anything that hits the top of the water, flakes, granules, uh, high quality frozen food, a nice rotation is always good for these little kind of mini carnivores. Uh, and in nature, a lot of the time, what they would eat is things that flow to them or insect larvae that would hit the surface of the water, be crawling around on some of those cobbles I mentioned earlier. As I mentioned, these are a shoaling species. Uh, they would prefer to be kept in groups of at least 8 to 10. I believe in my 10 gallon, if I'm remembering rightly, I had about 15 of these guys years ago. I'd say they're very peaceful. They are uh, harmless, much like a lot of Daniel species. They will kind of jostle each other out of the way and posture and do some chasing and nipping, but I've never had any sort of health problems pop up due to that. Although it does mean you wouldn't want to keep them with anything too tiny or too slow. You know, maybe micro rasboras wouldn't be a great fit just to make sure everybody can get fed. But they're a wonderful, beautiful little fish that as you can see are totally fine alongside other small fish like these ember tetras and neons we also have in this display. As I mentioned, these are a good fit for a lot of more kind of nano tanks, maybe not micro tanks. Uh, so long as they're kept appropriately with no slow moving fish and in decently sized groups, I've had a lot of luck keeping them with uh, other cyprinids and tetras, some live bearers, uh, small rainbow fish would be good fits, more boisterous anabantoids, catfish, loaches, so long as nobody's too slow moving again or nobody's large enough to, of course, eat these nice little guys. Uh, I did mention there being sexual dimorphism. These fish seem to be fairly easy to breed. Uh, they are egg scatterers that practice no parental care. So what you'd want to do is, of course, condition them nicely and then 
Uh, if you have a separate tank, place them in there with plenty of moss or of soft fibrous materials to try to get them to scatter their eggs so they can't eat them, and then hatch the fry from there. Uh, I know many people have mentioned having babies pop up even in tanks with adults. To get a bit scientific, these fish were first described by Sundar Lalhora in 1928, who named the species after Dr. B. N. Chopra, who collected the original specimens. Thanks again for joining us for our Species Spotlight. Keep your eyes peeled for next month's installment. And of course, if you ever want to see more of our awesome fish, just be sure to check out our website at wetspottropicalfish.com or come into the store if you're here local.